Welcome to our tour of the Agilent Carry 60 UV Viz Spectrophotometer. So we've opened it up to view the sample compartment where you can see um, our sample fits in a small uh, transparent cuvette and uh, we have an incident beam of radiation that strikes our sample. So we can scan across a series of wavelengths. They're directed through this little window toward our sample and when they hit the sample Radiation is absorbed at wavelength characteristic, characteristic to our sample, whereas the transmitted radiation then strikes a detector through this other window. From this, we can, we can calculate absorbance, which is proportional to the concentration of the sample. Therefore, we can use this for quantitative analysis of samples that absorb in the UV or visible range. So our sample cells are cuvettes. They are optically transparent in a single pathway. So we have our incident beam strikes one side and the radiation that's transmitted comes out the other and strikes the detector. The path length is set by the diameter of the cell. So we have a consistent geometric path length locked in for every analysis. The cubets themselves are typically made of glass or quartz because they need to be optically transparent. Um, for UV that requires quartz, and for um, visible, we can often use glass. During operation, our sample compartment is closed to prevent stray radiation or any in background interference. So unfortunately, I can't open this up and show you the optics, so I'm going to do what's hopefully the next best thing and overlay a schematic and trace the beams and show you all the components. Here's the optical diagram available from Agilent um, to guide you through the rest of our tour. We'll start with the, um, the radiation source. This instrument, that's a xenon flash lamp, um, so it's only igniting when you're actually observing your sample. That's directed toward a uh, diffraction grating. That diffraction grating separates the wavelengths. This allows us to select and scan specific wavelengths to pass um, through our sample. The beam then uh, leaves our monochromator, and it actually strikes a reference beam detector, which is a photodiode. So this not only allows us to correct for any fluctuations in beam stability, but it also provides us our incident radiation intensity. The incident beam is then directed toward the sample, and that radiation not absorbed is then transmitted through the sample to the detector, and this allows us to calculate absorbance, which according to Beer's law is proportional to concentration and is key to quantitative analysis using that UVB spectrophotometry. And that concludes our tour of the Agilent Carry 60.